المسلمين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهلا هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهلا كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين يا طالبا للعلم يرجو نفعه اسمع نصيحة ناصح معواني أخلص لربك في أمورك كلها فالمخلصون هم أولو العرفان فالجهد في جمع العلوم يضيع إن حل الرياء دواخل الإنسان واحفظ زمانك رأس مالك إنه هبة العظيم الواحد المنان ساعات يومك منحة ذهبية والناس بين الربح والخسران وعليك بالخنق الكريم مع التقى وعليك بالأدب الرفيع الشان واحفظ كتاب الله واستمسك به فالعلم كل العلم في القرآن واطلب صوار العلم قبل كباره واحفظ متون العلم بالإتقان وإذا طلبت العلم فاعرف قدره وأت البيوت أخي من البيبان جالس شيوخ العلم وانهل منهم واظفر أخي بالعالم الرباني واحفظ وداد الشيخ صاح فإنه بعد الأبوة في المقام الثاني من لم يوقر شيخه أستاذه آلت عواقبه إلى الخذلان واعمل بعلمك في شؤونك كلها واشغل زمانك في رضا الرحمن وأمر بمعروف وحارب منكرا كن ناصحا للناس كل زمان وإذا بلغت من العلوم نصابها أدي الزكاة أخي بلا كتمان علم مريدا للعلوم وقل له يا مرحبا بوصية العدنان صلى عليه الله ما فاح الشذا دوما بريح المسك والريحان صلى عليه الله ما فاح الشذا دوما بريح المسك والريحان يا طالب العلم قم لا تنم فإن الزمان انقضى وانصرم فكن ما حييت ضنينا به فظنك بالوقت عين الكرم 
وكن حلس درسك وافرح به تكن قائدا في غد للأمم وبادر شبابك من قبل أن يقطع عزمك سيف الهرم ودع ما استطعت فضول اختلاط وأكل ونوم وقول يذم وصاحب نبيلا ولا تكثرن فكم مكثر يا أخي حرم وحقق إذا رمت شيئا ولا تسم بوهمك ذات الورم رأيت العلوم وأصحابها لدى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم آمين All praise is due to Allah We praise him, we worship him, we seek his assistance, we seek his tawfiq We pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which is beneficial to us and we pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to apply it فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يُرِدِ, من يرد اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Tonight is the night of the 28th of, Rabi- of Jumad al-Akhirah of the year 1441 since Hijrat al-Nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which translates into February the 22nd of the Gregorian calendar 2020. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this night a blessed night and I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make uh, all the brothers and sisters who are physically with us in this masjid or who might be tuning in live to make them mubarakeen in themselves and in their families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep giving us the tawfiq to sit around these majalis al-ilm, which are majalis dhikr of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. These majalis al-ilm or majalis al-dhikr are witnessed by the angels of Allah, showered by His mercy. And I pray to Allah azza wa jal to make our jaiza when we are done here is that it will be said to us, go for you have been forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep uh, showing us that which is true as true and that which is false as false and give us the steadfastness upon the straight path until we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you know, we've been commenting on this great text of Aqeedah called Al-Aqeedah Al-Tahawiyyah. And tonight is the 120th majlis of this commentary on this Al-Aqeedah Al-Mubarakah, Aqeedah Al-Imam Abu Ja'far Al-Tahawi Al-Hanafi. And inshallah, as we inch closer to the end of it, we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make us benefit from what we learned and to actually take what we learned as our belief in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and reward us for obeying him subhanahu wa ta'ala for having the belief that he wants from us I also just wanted to remind the brothers and sisters who might be tuning in live that they are able to send their questions on um, through the uh, YouTube channel or the other channels inshallah and will attempt to answer them as we possibly can Without further ado, um, where, we left off la- <coughs> Excuse me. where we left off last Saturday is we started the commentary on the statement 215 and we took, um, as a matter of fact, we considered 215 with the next three statements. And so inshallah, we're going to just summarize what we said last Saturday and we um, go from there inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. 
Statement number 215, قال المصنف الإمام أبو جعفر الطحاوي الحنفي قال العلامة أبو جعفر الطحاوي الحنفي statement 215 وهو بين الغلو والتقصير وبين التشبيه والتعطيل وبين الجبر والقدر وبين اليأس واليأس which means it, and it lies between extremism and falling short and between tashbih which is likening the creation to the creator and التعطيل negating Allah's uh, attributes and between fatalism or jabr and denying pre-decree and between feeling secure and despairing. Now we said these four statements, in these four statements, he mentioned eight different things, if you notice, right? Eight different things in each statement. Of those four, there are two things that are opposite. So up two opposite things in every statement. So there is a total of eight things that Imam Abu Jafar has mentioned in, in this statement. He said, وَهُوَ and it is. And we did mention, and Hafiz Barakallah fi helped us, that this is in reference to Islam, right? Because in the previous statement, he was talking about what? Deenullah, which he said, Islam is al Islam. Remember in the previous statement, statement 213, that you see on the screen. He said, وَدِينُ fi al ardi wa samai wahid, wa huwa al Islam. So the deen of Allah, Deenullah, which is al Islam, Deen al Islam, he continue, he's continuing and saying, Wahua bayna al ghulu, and it is. So it is in reference to, so it is in reference to al Islam. Here. So this it over here is in reference to the Deen of al Islam. Or you can say Allah's religion. Because we said that there's only one religion. Allah, religion is one. Remember we said in the previous statement, Wadinullahi Wahid, whether in the heavens or whether on earth, it is the very same religion, which is Deen al-Islam, that all the messengers were sent with, right? We talked about that. So he's continuing, and it lies between extremism and falling short. And he said the same thing between the two different opposite things in the next few statements. We said the fact that he said it lies between, it means that Islam is not, not any of these things. Is not any of these things. So uh, these attributes or these things that Imam Abu Jafar is mentioning, all of them are things that Islam disapproves of. All of them are things that Islam disapproves of and does not approve. So Deen Allah, which is Islam, the Deen of Al Haq the truth and the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is not with extremism, is not in ghulu, nor is it with falling short. So extremism and falling short are, have nothing to do with the deen of Islam. Likewise, um, he said, وَبَيْنَ التَّشْبِيهِ وَالتَّعْطِيلِ So um, likening the creation to the creator or disabling Allah's attribute have nothing to do with the deen of Islam, right? Likewise, um, fatalism, which is to actually think or to believe that we are compelled into doing what we're doing, this is al-jabr. Al-jabr is to actually believe that we are compelled, we are forced into doing what we do. And the opposite of it, denying the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal altogether, all of that, both of them have nothing to do with the deen of Islam. Likewise, feeling secure, feeling totally secure, or despairing from the mercy of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, likewise have nothing to do with the deen of al-Islam. Feeling secure from the plan of Allah azza wa jal, or despairing from the mercy of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, both of them are deviant ideologies and have nothing to do with the deen of al-Islam. And Ahlul sunnati wal jama'ah, which are the true followers of this deen, and they follow the, the righteous predecessors, they took the middle ground in between these things. They follow the middle ground in between these things and all of these matters. So Islam, Islam is wasat, is middle ground in between extremism and falling short. It is between al-ghulu, it is in the middle between al-ghulu and al-taqseer. 
Likewise, it is a wasat, it is middle ground in between likening Allah's, uh, Allah to his creation and disabling the attributes of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Likewise, it is middle ground in between saying that we are forced into doing what we do and between saying that we have an absolute will and Allah Azza wa Jal has no will over us. None of them is from the deen of Islam and Ahl Sunnah are in the middle, in, in between of that. Likewise, they are middle ground between feeling fully secure and between despairing from Allah Azza wa Jal mercy. So nor, neither do we feel fully secure and safe from the plan of Allah Azza wa Jal, nor do we despair and give up uh, hope in Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And we said that this, if you contemplate these statements, in reality, they really cover everything that we said before in this al aqid al mubaraka Everything that we mentioned, everything that Imam Abu Ja'far mentioned, all of those 200 and some statements before, and all the commentary that we made regarding these statements, right? These four statements, they cover them all because we said that everything that we said and everything that we mentioned and everything that we explained is neither ghulu nor falling short. It is neither, um, uh, uh, neither uh, likening Allah Azza wa Jal when we affirm the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, we weren't likening Allah Azza wa Jal to his creation. Nor did we have to disable Allah's attribute. We affirm them without likening him to his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, likewise, uh, when we talked about the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal and our belief in it, we said we are not forced and we have a choice, but at the same time, we don't have an absolute will, right? But we have a will under the will of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So neither do we deny the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, nor do we say that we are just like a tool, merely a tool being just moved around, like a robot, literally like a robot. This is not from the deen of Islam in anything. And this aqidah, like I said, is in between al uh, ghulu and at taqsir in the actions. We don't go to extreme in our actions or in our creed or in our, uh, in our belief in the iman and its levels, nor do we fall short of what Allah Azza wa Jal ordered us to do. And in, in the matters of attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal and affirming them, we don't disable them, nor do we liken Allah Azza wa Jal to his creation. Um, some of the groups that went extreme are al-khawarij. Al-khawarij is some of the groups that went to an extreme. They actually went to extreme in their creed, they went to extreme in their belief, and they were to extreme in their actions in our, in our worships. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. While the people of the desires, those who follow their desires are the ones who fell short. They followed their desires, and they are guided by their desires, and also there are groups called al-murji'ah who took the actions outside of the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. They said it's just, matters of, it's, it's just a matter of believing in Allah Azza wa Jal. Now after that you come short, it doesn't harm you. And we said both of them are wrong and both of them are deviant. Al-mujassima are those groups who actually gave a bodily de de description of Allah Azza wa Jal. They made Allah Azza wa Jal yushbih khalqahu. Yani they made Allah Azza wa Jal resemble his creation. And those who actually ran away from doing that and they disabled the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, these are al-mu'attila and they did the ta'til that he is referring to in this statement 216. So all of these and al-jabr, there are groups we mentioned before that are called al-jabriya who believe that we are compelled into doing what we're doing um, and al-qadariya, those who deny al-qadar and, and, and obviously we're neither of, of those uh, to uh, both of those extremes. Um, we also said that the people of uh, desires, Ahl al-Shahawat, and those who are actually, um, they follow their desires and their evil inclinations, they felt secure from the plan of Allah Azza wa Jal. They felt secure from the uh, plan of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, so they did what they wanted to do, whatever their desires uh, led them to do, they did, and they felt secure. By doing that, they felt secure from the uh, plan of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And on the other hand, there are some groups who actually gave up. They saw that they were sinning and they have shortcomings, so they despaired from the mercy of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. 
but Islam is neither of those two extremes. Neither of those two extremes. So you see that this, these statements, these four statements in reality summarize, really sums up and summarize everything that Imam Abu Ja'far said previously in this, in this aqidah. This in between that he was referring to in the statement 215, right? It is in between, right? And let me use a different color. This in between, lies in between, between this and between that, between this and between that, we said that some of the people of knowledge to in, the, in today's world, they call it al-wasatiyyah, from al-wasat. Al-wasatiyyah, which is the middle ground that Allah Azza wa Jal has praised, which is also based on the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and on the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This wasatiyyah they applied in their aqidah, in their creed, and in their uh, affirmation of the attributes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. This wasatiyya in al-Iman, in, in understanding what al-Iman is. Al-wasatiyya in the qadr, in how we understand al-qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, the decree of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Al-wasatiyya in the suluk, in the attitude that you have toward Allah Azza wa Jal and toward the creation. Wasatiyya in the worship, we don't exaggerate nor do we fall short. So there's a wasatiyya even in the acts of worship. Also, there is a wasatiyya in how we judge the people and how we judge to, to, to people. We don't exaggerate in our judgment. If they sin, we don't take them immediately out of the fold of Islam, nor do we say, you know, you're fine. It doesn't harm you. You can sin as much as you want. It doesn't harm your iman. We don't see either one of them. So we are, we, we take a middle ground in judging the people in all their statuses. And there's no doubt that the deen of Islam is in reality wasat, as Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala described this ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by saying, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا And thus we made you, يعني, O Muslim, we made you a wasat, a just and the best nation. A just and the best nation. Why did it become wasat, or, be, or rather before that? What does it mean wasat? وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَةً What does it mean umma wasat? Al-wasat, as the uh, uh, righteous predecessors of this ummah, they said, it means that it is just and the, the best. خيار عدلاً خيارا يعني they are the best خير الناس, they are the best of the people, the best nation, and they are just. عدل, عدول, يعني they are just in everything that has to do with their, with their religion compared to the, to the previous nation. Why did it become umma wasat, just? Because compared to the previous nations who took extremes, some of them, they went stricter than they need be in their religion. Some of the previous nations, they put more restrictions upon themselves. They put more hardships. They, they interpreted their deen in a stricter way than it need be, than what Allah Azza wa Jal wanted from them. And on some, some other nations, they fell short, like the Christians, right? It's all about love. You can do whatever you want. You can sin all you want. You can follow your desires all you want. And, Allah is, and, and God is just about love. And He will forgive you. You can do whatever you want. This They went, uh, they, fall, they fell short of what Allah Azza wa Jal wanted from them. Ahl al-Islam, the people of al-Islam are wasat, are, are just and are middle ground in all their statuses, in their aqidah, in their ibadah, in their attitude, in every, their, in all their statuses, they are wasat with respect to the other nations. Let's now take these statements one at a time, starting with statement number 215. He said, الغلو والتقصير. الغلو is extremism. And at taqseer also sometimes referred, you may see the word al-jafa. Al-jafa, taqseer or al-jafa. You say somebody muqassir, yani is falling short, or jafin, yani he is not doing what he's supposed to do, what Allah Azza wa Jal is, uh, has mandated upon us to do. So that is why you see Islam between al-ghulu and between al-jafa. And so al-Muslim, al-Muslim, يعني the person who is upon the deen of Islam ليس بالغالي ولا بالجافي المسلم ليس بالغالي ولا بالجافي يعني the Muslim is not an extreme nor somebody who falls short you see that? he is 
on the middle ground, on the wasatiya. And this word, al-ghulu, as we said last Saturday, it appears, it actually is mentioned in the Quran in multiple ayat, and we actually mentioned those ayat, some of them, where Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah An-Nisa, for example, Ya Ahl al-Kitabi, Ya Ahl al-Kitabi, La taghlu, La taghlu from al-ghulu, La taghlu fi dinikum, Wa la taqulu ala Allahi illa al-haq. Do not go to extreme, do not be extreme in your religion. And this is what is being dispraised, al-ghulu fi al-deen. Right? And this is what we're talking about, right? Al-ghulu fi al-deen, to go in ex to extremes in the deen. In another ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, and this address is to who? To the people of the book, yani to the Jews and to the Christians. Ya Ahl al-Kitab, la taghlu fi deenikum. Do not go to extreme in your religion. Ghayr al-haq, which is not from al-haq. It is not from what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from you. And in the hadith, we mentioned also the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was performing Al-Hajj and he was accompanied by um, he was accompanied by Abdullah uh, Ibn, Abba, Ibn Mas'ud and he asked him uh, to give him a few pebbles, right, for the stoning. So he gave him uh, a few very moderate, moderate size pebbles. He said like the size of the uh, date stones or the fingertips and he looked at them alayhi salatu wasalam and he said to the Muslim he said like these and beware of going to extremes in religion in religious matters he said so beware of going to extreme or to extremes in religious matters for those who came before you were destroyed going to extreme will doom the person and will, ex and will actually destroy those people in those groups. And those extreme people will never succeed and they will never be from the successful ones. Came, uh, for those who came before you were destroyed because of going to extremes in religious matters. This ghulu, like I said, can be in, in all aspects of the deen. Yani you will see people who are extreme in their ideologies. There will, there will be those people who are extreme in their worships, in their ibadat. Those, for example, who came or during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who was standing up in prayer would not sleep, the one who would not marry the woman, the one who would not eat meat, the one, for example, who would fast contiguously, forever, never, never break his fast, right? Uh, he would fast every single day. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned against that. And he said, Ala inni atqaakum lillah. I am the most pious among you to Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa akhshaakum lillah. And I have the most khashya to Allah Azza wa Jal. And yet, I marry the woman. And I eat the meat. And I sleep. And I stand up in prayer during the night. And I fast. And I break my fast. I don't fast every single day, right? So he, taught, he indicated to the ummah. And he warned the ummah against going to extreme in ibadah. So the ghulu can be in ibadah, as it can be in the aqidah, as, as it can be in you know, the suluk, etc., etc. And so if we want to really identify what al ghulu in the reality, what is the reality of al ghulu or how do we define al ghulu if we were to quantify it, or to kind of define it, if you wish, in, 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 term, in uh, you know, terminology terms, it is ziyada. It is the extra to do beyond, above and beyond what is permitted in the sharia. Ziyada to go extra and to do more or to go beyond above and above what, what, what is permitted or what has been legislated in the Sharia ah or what has been permitted in the Sharia, ah, whether with respect to the attitude or with respect to ta'abud, al-ibadah, actions, actions of worship or acts of worship, or whether with respect to al-i'tiqad. Also from al-ghulu, we can also add to that, is we, we call it a tashdeed. Have you heard this term before? Yani to become, to be stricter than you need be. Some people think that if you're not stricter, then you're not pious enough. And they think or they equate piety to being stricter. If you make things easier, because this is what the Sharia allows, you say, oh, this person is diluting the religion. You know, is taking it easy, right? He's actually watering down the religion. That's not the case. If this is what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from us, then actually doing that is the piety. And it is not piety to make it harder or stricter. 
and make more conditions and put more restraints and constraints upon you that is not permitted in the Sharia. This is not from this is not from the uh, from the from the piety to Allah Tabaraka wa Taala. I'll give you an example, just a quick example that just came to mind. Subhanallah. There will be some people, for example, will say, "I will never, never, ever shorten my prayer." Why? We're traveling, for example. This is permitted in the Sharia. Oh no, I just don't feel comfortable enough with it. This is extreme. Subhanallah, this is a rukhsa. This is an ease that Allah Azza wa Jal gave to you. And to my modest knowledge, this is permitted in all the madhahib. All the madhahib, correct me if I'm wrong, but in madhahib al-imam Abu Hanifa, madhahib al-imam Malik, madhahib al-imam al-Shafi'in, madhahib al-imam Ahmad, all of them, they agree upon this, that if you're traveling, you are allowed to shorten the prayer. Some people will say, no, I'm, I just don't feel comfortable with that. This is extremism. This is al-ghulu. This is from al-ghulu. Allah Azza wa Jal allowed you to do that. Why do you go to, ex to, uh, to, and to uh, go extra and make it harder? Making it harder is not more piety. Making it harder, and this is a misconception among people, making it harder is not uh, piety to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So this is the reality of extremism in, in the deen. So whoever is adding more or making it harder or stricter or going beyond and above what is permitted in the Sharia, then we say that that person is ghalin. Yani he is extreme. He or she is extreme. Um, the opposite of the extremism is the taqseer or as we call the jafa, right? The taqseer or jafa, and this is what he is referring to in here. وَهُوَ بَيْنَ الْغُلُوِّ وَالتَّقْصِيرِ التقصير to actually short, uh, fall short, to come off short of what is required from you, whatever Allah Azza wa Jal mandated upon you. There are wajibat in the deen, and there are fara'id, there are mandatory things, and there are orders that Allah Azza wa Jal ordered us with. And there are prohibitions that he made impermissible. These are red lines that we're not supposed to, not, we're not supposed to cross. If we fall short of that, if we violate the prohibitions, if we don't establish the mandatory things upon us, then we are falling short of what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from us. And this is uh, from a taqseer or al jafa that he's referring to. And this typically is by following uh, the desires and by following you know, the evil inclinations of the person, right? Yani it is your, uh, by slacking off and by following your desires that you actually miss some of the wajibat or all of the wajibat for that matter. And this is from, um, from falling short or not fulfilling the wajibat. So, and both of them are deviant. And Islam is none of either one of them, right? It is in the, in the middle. One of the obvious examples of the extreme or the extremism, one of the obvious examples of extremism is like we said a little earlier, is al-khawarij. And al-khawarij were extreme in many aspects, not in just one thing, but they were extreme in a lot of things, in a lot of things. They were extreme in their aqidah. They were extreme in their aqidah, so they uh, took away from the fold of Islam people who do not deserve to be kicked out of the fold of Islam. Right? Just for merely committing major sins lesser than a shirk, even if they don't believe it is halal for them, they kick them out of the fold of Islam. And they said these are not, they are not Muslim. And so they labeled them as uh, kuffar. And this is why we call them takfiriyin. You know, these are the people, these are the groups who actually label mukaffirin. And they left the manhaj of the Sahaba, the way and the methodology of the Sahaba in, in understanding and in, in dealing with the sins and how we judge people based on their disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal and in their sins. They likewise, they committed extremism in their ibadah. And that is why in the hadith, Yani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when, when he foretold us, when he foretold us about these khawarij, and he gave us some of their descriptions, he told the Sahaba that you will belittle your ibadah next to their ibadah. Imagine he's talking to the Sahaba, and the Sahaba are the best of the, of the nation. He said you will look at their prayer, and in comparison, you will belittle your, your salah. You will look at their fasting and you will belittle your fasting compared to their, to their fasting as it was narrated in the hadith of the Prophet 
they, they will also be, go to extreme in their jihad, fighting for the sake of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, in forbidding evil and enjoining good. They fought for the sake of Allah azza wa jal, but guess what? They fought those who do not deserve to be fought. <laughs> and they killed those who do not deserve to be killed. As a matter of fact, that it, though they fought and they killed those who it is impermissible for them to fight and to kill. And, as, and so they went to this extreme. As they went as far as killing the best of the nation during their time. And they sought al-Jannah by doing that. They caused the martyrdom of Uthman ibn Affan inside his house. Radiallahu anhu wa arda. They, you know, they brought people around this house and they, you know, they uh, uh, played on the emotion and they eventually caused his martyrdom in, inside his house. Who caused that? Al-Khawarij. And during the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiyallahu an, we're talking after Abu Bakr al-Siddiq passed away, after Umar, Umar uh, ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu an, he was martyred. And after Uthman ibn Affan was martyred as well. After these three, who was the best person on earth, on the face of earth after them? Ali ibn Abi Talib. They went and they killed him and they thought they were actually seeking Rida Allah Azza wa Jal, the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, and his Jannah by doing that. Who killed Ali ibn Abi Talib? The enemies of Islam? No, one of the Muslim or so-called Muslim. His name is Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. Look at the extremism, subhanAllah, and this is why I'm spending some time on this. Brothers and sisters, wallahi, this is a very dangerous thing. And sometimes you even see it in our societies, in our communities, and this is why people go out and do crazy stuff. Why? Out of extremism. Ali ibn Abi Talib, imagine the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the husband of his daughter, Fatima, and the fourth Khalifa Rashidi, Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the best man during his time, the best man on face of earth during his time, he was killed by a Muslim, Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim, al Khariji. Do you know who is Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim? Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim is half of the Kitab Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. He was sent by Umar ibn, Umar ibn al-Khattab to Egypt to teach the Muslim the Quran. Because Ab, uh, uh, Amr, uh, Amr ibn al-As, who was appointed, who was the deputy of Umar ibn, Ab, ibn al-Khattab on Egypt, right? He said, send me somebody who can teach the people the Quran. So he, sa he sent a letter to him. He said, I am sending you some, one of the best people, Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. And he is a very honorable person. When he reaches there, give him a, 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 a suitable house and a, give him a place where he can teach the Muslim the, relig the, the, the Quran. But he was a man of ibadah, but not exactly of knowledge. And that is why when this movement of al-Khawarij started to to uh, evolve and started to get uh, traction, they affected him and he went by the emotions and he went by all of that and eventually he went and killed Ali ibn Abi Talib. When they caught him, you know what he wanted, to, what he wanted them to do? He told them, don't just kill me like that, but start cutting my limbs one after the other so that I see by my own eyes, my limbs are being cut off for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Imagine. This is al-ghulu, this is extremism. Extremism in ibadah, extremism in suluk, in attitude. Look what he's thinking. He's thinking that he's drawing closer to Allah Azza wa Jal by doing that. Alayhi min Allahi ma yastahaq. And so this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described them in the hadith. He said, يَقْتُلُونَ أَهْلَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَيَدَعُونَ أَهْلَ الْأَوْثَانِ they will kill the Muslim, but leave the idol worshippers alone. And they will bring the ayat that Allah Azza wa Jal revealed with respect to the disbelievers, mushrikeen and disbelievers, and they will apply them upon the people of Islam. And I know I'm getting out of a little bit, but just as again to, to highlight how dangerous this ideology is. Uh, very quickly, inshallah, uh, there was a person, uh, two people who met in Hajj. One of them is uh, with uh, this, this ideology of al-khawarij, fikr al-khawarij. He was talking to the person next to him. He said, what do, you think who, what do you think about the person who commits a major sin? 
He said he is a fasiq, yani he is somebody who is a sinner, right? He is somebody who is disobedient to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this sinning, this major sin, obviously diminishes his iman. It have, uh, no question, it has an impact upon his iman. This is what it means, fasiq. Fasiq, yani naqus al iman. Yani who, who has lesser than a perfect iman, belief in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. But it doesn't take the person outside of the uh, pale of Islam. He said, well then, what do you say about Allah Azza wa Jal saying, وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَإِنَّ لَهُ نَارَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا Al-Ma'asiya in this ayah, this is the ayah of Surah Al-Jinn. وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ All of the scholars of tafsir, they said this ma'asiya is a shirk. When Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ And whoever disobeys Allah Azza wa Jal, يعني with a shirk. فَإِنَّ لَهُ نَارَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا They will abide eternally in hellfire, yes. But what is the meaning of al-ma'asiya? Al-ma'asiya is a shirk in here. So he applied it to the Muslim. He said, see, whoever commits a sin, yani major sin, then he is khalid abadan in nar jahannam. This is the extremism. They apply the ayat that, that was revealed with respect to the disbelievers, and they apply them too to the believers. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu in the hadith, he said, um, and they will pass through Islam as an arrow passes through the body of the target. Yani they are not from the Muslim. They will pass through the Islam. Yani Islam will not actually go beyond their throat and they will pass through uh, Islam as an arrow passes through the body of the, of the target. As with respect to the taqsir, which is the second part, uh, falling short or coming off short, this is the status, obviously, of those who are led and guided by their desires. Shahawat, right? They follow their desires, their harmful desires and their evil desires and their evil inclinations, right? And they slack off and they take it easy, right? And so they miss from al-ibadah, al-wajibah. They, they leave the ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jal, either entirely or partly. And they leave obedience of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And they do not do what Allah Azza wa Jal order them to do. Or they violate and they do from the impermissible things, al muharramat that Allah Azza wa Jal has forbidden. So they live in between either uh, f uh, falling short of performing al-wajibat and al-fara'id upon them, and between violating al-muharramat and al-kaba'ir that Allah Azza wa Jal has forbade, and they do not repent, and they do not remember, and they do not go back to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Both of them are deviant. Both of them are wrong. And both of them, extremism, الغلو uh, uh, and التقصير or الجفاء which is falling short both of them are deviant and dispraised and what is الخير ما بينهما what's in between وهو بين so what's in the بين what is in between this وسطية between the غلو and between the تقصير or الجفاء this is what the deen of Islam is all about any questions or should I continue? Let's, let me continue, inshallah, and then we'll stop or we'll, op, we'll open the door of questions at the very end. The next statement, 216, that second couple of, or, or the two things that are opposite, he said, وَبَيْنَ التَّشْبِيهِ وَالتَّعْطِيلِ And it is between likening the creation of the, to the Creator and negating Allah's attribute. A tashbih is to actually draw shabah, likening, yani to make something similar to something else. Right? This is a tashbih. And this is who are called al mushabbiha. Yani he's, called, he's referring by tashbih. Wa huwa bayna tashbih. These are the groups that we called in the in before are called al mushabbiha. These groups who actually liken Allah Azza wa Jal to his creation or liken his attributes to the attributes of the creation, whether all of them in their entirety or whether some of the attributes of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to the attributes of the to the attributes of the creation. And we said this is obviously nothing from Islam in anything because Allah Azza wa Jal laysa ka mithlihi shay. Nothing is like unto Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. What is Islam? He said, wa huwa bain. So it is in between. What is the way of Islam, of the true deen of Islam and the true deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala? It is, and this is the way of the Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah, which we already obviously talked about. It is actually to, to affirm the attributes of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, to affirm the attributes of Allah azza wa jal with the meaning that we understand 
without drawing similarity to the attributes of Allah of the, of the creation without drawing similarity to the attributes of the of the creation we, in other words when we affirm the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal we affirm them with the basic meaning with the basic meaning that we understand right without saying that we understand the full and the complete meaning of them nor without knowing the reality of these attributes and how these attributes are right we don't go into that. We say, when Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that He exists, we believe, we say yes, we believe in His existence. We, when Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that He sees, we say yes, we believe that He sees and we understand what that means. We understand the basic meaning of the seeing and basic meaning of the, of the hearing and of the existence. This does not make Allah Azza wa Jal similar to the creation. And when I say I exist, I as a creation, I exist, but we know also that Allah Azza wa Jal exists. My existence and His existence, Subhanahu wa Taala, are not like are not the same, right? When we say that Allah Azza wa Jal exists, we know that there is a common factor in between those two attributes, which is the basic meaning. I understand what it means that Allah Azza wa Jal exists, but I don't know the full meaning of it. I don't know the perfect meaning of it. I understand the basic meaning. And I don't understand how or the reality of, of that existence. Likewise, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is described with a sama' with hearing, and He is described with uh, al basar that he, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala sees, right? But this, His seeing and His uh, hearing is suitable to His Majesty Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal. His, his hearing and his seeing is perfect and complete and exalted above any defect. Any defect of, of, of this attribute and whatever is insuitable of his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his seeing is not like our seeing and his, uh, and his hearing is not like our hearing. Uh, and the hearing of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is perfect and this is based on his saying, is his saying subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Nothing is like unto him, and he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is nothing like unto him in his essence, nor there is anything like unto him in his attributes and in his name subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is nothing similar to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether in himself, in his essence, or whether in his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of At-Tashbih that he's referring to are those who actually draw this similarity to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. They draw this similarity between Allah azza wa jal and his creation. And that is why he's saying in here, it is between At-Tashbih and between at ta'til. It is in between those two. So it's neither this nor that. It is neither, neither this nor that. al mushabbiha who actually commit tashbih are the ones who actually made the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, whether all of them or some of them are like the attributes of the creation. If they make all of the attributes similar to the attributes of the creation, we call them al-mujassima, yani from al-jism, from the body. Yani they literally describe Allah Azza wa Jal with a body description, as if you are seeing him. These are al-mujassima, and this is deviant ideology. Those who make similarity in one attribute or two or few or some, these are, we call them al-mushabbiha. Yani these are the ones who actually draw some similarity between Allah Azza wa Jal and His creation. And obviously, we actually free ourselves and disavow all of them, whether al-mujassima or al-mushabbiha. And you notice, by the way, al-mushabbiha are the ones who committed ghulu, again, they committed ghulu, they actually were extreme in affirming the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yani they went to such an extreme in affirming the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal as if they described them as if they are seeing them. So they made them like the attributes of the creation. And this is wrong. On the other side, there is al muattila who does al-ta'til. Yani these are the ones who disable the attributes of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. For ta'til is to disable, right? Is to disable and not affirm uh, something. And those disables or those who disable the attributes of Allah azza wa jal are, can be either the outright deniers, the outright deniers of all the attributes of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, 
So because whoever denies one attribute or more, right, whoever denies one attribute of more, then he has some share of this ta'til, some share of this disabling the attributes of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And those who deny the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, like Al Mu'tazila, and we've seen those, at- those groups before. There's Al Mu'tazila who actually deny all of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. They only affirm the names. They only affirm the beautiful names, Al Asma'. But they deny all of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Or Al Ashairah, because they make ta'wil. So whether you actually deny or whether you misinterpret, you make it ta'wil, and you, when you make it ta'wil, you're not affirming the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. When you misrepresent and you twist the meaning, you're not affirming the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we said affirming the attributes, believing in the attributes is to believe in them with a meaning, with the correct meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted. Yani ala murad Allah, based on what Allah Azza wa Jal wanted and based on the basic meaning that we all understand from. We all understand what it means that Allah Azza wa Jal sees, that Allah Azza wa Jal hears. And by the way, even the scholars yani, in their statements, when we say that Allah Azza wa Jal hears and sees, this has impact on me. I know what that means. I don't know what fully it means. I don't know how Allah Azza wa Jal sees or how Allah Azza wa Jal hears. But I know what it means and I know what the implications of that. That I cannot hide anything from him. That whatever I do, he will see me. Whatever I say, he will hear me. And whatever I do or say, he will know about it. And this is what should make me actually feel shy from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to disobey him. And that is why Imam al-Shafi'i in two lines of poetry, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَإِذَا خَلَوْتَ بِرِيبَةٍ فِي ظُلْمَةٍ وَالنَّفْسُ دَاعِيَةٌ إِلَى الطُّغْيَانِ And if you ever are alone under the darkness, and your soul is whispering to you to do that disobedience, to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal under the darkness. وَإِذَا خَلَوْتَ بِرِيبَةٍ يعني There is riba. يعني your, your soul is talking to you to do something that displeases Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? فِي ظُلْمَةٍ يعني In the ظلمة, in the darkness. وَالنَّفْسُ دَاعِيَةٌ إِلَى الطُّغْيَانِ فَاسْتَحِي مِنْ نَظَرِ الْإِلَهِ then feel shy from the look, from the vision of Allah Azza wa Jal, from the seeing of Allah Azza wa Jal. فَاسْتَحِي مِنْ نَظَرِ الْإِلَاهِ وَقُلْ لَهَا إِنَّ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الظَّلَامَ يَرَانِي And tell your soul that the, the one who created the darkness can see me. The darkness will not hide me from Allah Azza wa Jal. And whatever I do in the, in the darkness or under the shade of darkness does not conceal it from Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? So notice, in فَاسْتَحِي مِنْ نَظَرِ الْإِلَاهِ Feel shy from the, from the seeing of Allah Azza wa Jal. So whoever denies or misinterpret or make ta'wil or, or misrepresent or interpret in a different way the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, they are in reality, they are disabling the attributes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So whether they do all of the attributes, they disable them or some of them, they are all called mu'attila. They are all disablers or deniers of the attributes of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And if you notice, those also committed, these mu'attila, they committed ghulu. How? They committed ghulu in exalting Allah Azza wa Jal. Why do they disable the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal? Why do they do that? Because in their thinking, they're running away from the possibility that Allah Azza wa Jal will be similar to his creation. So they run away from that. They run away to, to, to run away from likening Allah Azza wa Jal to his creation. They disabled the attributes. This is ghulu as well. Al-Islam is neither nor. Al-Islam is neither nor. It is neither tashbih nor ta'atil. And this again means that everything that he mentioned earlier in the aqidah, from the affirmation of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, and all the commentary that we made, it is neither, neither tashbih nor ta'til. It is neither tashbih nor ta'til. <clears throat> so what are we supposed to do then? What we're supposed to do is to actually affirm those attributes, like I said, with the basic meaning, without tashbih, without ta'til, but rather by affirming those attributes, 
the, of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala with, with the basic meaning based on the rule, based on the qa'idah that لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like unto him and yet he is the all hearing, the all seeing subhanahu wa ta'ala and also based on the rule of the people of knowledge that confirming and affirming the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal it is an affirmation of those attributes that they are there with the basic meaning not an affirmation of uh, the reality of those attributes or nor w how is Allah Azza wa Jal described with these attributes how Allah Azza wa Jal sees how Allah Azza wa Jal hears how Allah Azza wa Jal knows we don't know that right so affirmation of the attributes is not an affirmation of how Allah Azza wa Jal has those attributes but that they are there طيب. and I finish this discussion by saying that it should be really obvious to, to, in my mind to be frank with you that any person who says that when we affirm the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, you are drawing similarity. I mean, which mind does it come to that when you say Allah Azza wa Jal is all seeing, then we are saying that He sees like us? Allah Azza wa Jal gave us the, uh, examples of all types of creation in the in the Quran, in the ayat of the Quran. He gave us uh, He gave us all types of creation that are different, that they are not the same of all types and of all sizes and of all capabilities. He gave us the example of the flies. And, you know, he told us that they hear and that they see and they, they have power. And he gave us the example of the humankind, of the human beings, the insan, and how Allah Azza wa Jal gave him powers and he gave him he hearing. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ سَمْعًا وَأَبْصَارًا وَأَفْئِدًا Right? He, gives them, he gave the son of Adam hearing and seeing. Does, the, does it come to any person's mind that our seeing is like the fly seeing this tiny creature? Is it the same thing? Is the, our power like the power of the flies? Or like the elephant, for example, for that matter? Or like the bee, for that matter? They all have different, they all have the same, they, are, they have common uh, tools and they have common capabilities. They have seeing and they have hearing and they have powers. But is, is it the same thing? Each one of them has, have, has powers that are suitable for them, for how they look and how Allah Azza wa Jal created them. And likewise, when we affirm the attributes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, if, if, if there is this difference in between the creation among themselves, how about the difference between the creation and the creator? The difference between the creation and the creator is even far greater and far bigger than the difference in between the attributes of the creation among themselves. So I think it should be very obvious and it should, be, uh, it should go without saying that when we say that, the, uh, we, that Allah Azza wa Jal is described with these attributes and that their, the creation have the similar attributes in the name, then these are so imperfect and so, uh, so defected that they are, uh, not to be, they are not similar to the attributes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. I think this should be actually very obvious. The following statement, 217, Al Imam Abu Ja'far, he said, وَهُوَ بَيْنَ الْجَبْرِ وَالْقَدَرِ or, well, نعم, والقدر. وَهُوَ بَيْنَ الْجَبْرِ وَالْقَدَرِ This Jabr and Al-Qadr is something that we actually talked in, you know, in the previous statements across or along this Aqeedah many times. If you remember, we talked about Al-Qadr several times. Remember, Imam Abu Ja'far revisited this topic several times in several uh, sections of this Aqeedah. So we talked in, in a lot of details, and there is no point in going back and uh, in, in talking about that. Um, <clears throat> and if somebody wants some refreshment, then he should go back to the previous episodes. But we did talk about Al-Qadr in, 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 in great details, and we said that Al-Jabr is the madhab of Al-Jabriya. What, what does he mean by Al-Jabr? Al-Jabr is the methodology, or if you, you may wish, you, you, uh, if you wish, it is the madhab of the groups called Al-Jabriya. And we're going to talk about very quickly, inshallah, about this. And Al-Qadar, what he means by Al-Qadar, is the madhab of Al-Qadariya. So Al-Jabr is a reference to Al-Jabriya, and Al-Qadar is a reference to Al-Qadariya. Al-Jabriya are those groups that we talked about, those who actually, uh, they went to extreme in affirming the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. And by doing so, again, you notice, ghulu. Ghulu is something that is very dangerous. That's why you see it affects all of them. Yani all of those deviant things are an extremism in some aspect. Are an extremism in some aspect. Al-Jabriya, 
they went to extreme in affirming the will of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. They went so and they exaggerated and they went to such an extreme that they stripped and deprived the creation from any will. So they made them com uh, compelled into doing what they do. So they said, we have no choice. They deprived the son of Adam from any will of choice. So they said that the servant, me and you, are compelled into doing what we, we do. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice in our actions. And we are only compelled into doing what we're doing. And so we are like literally like a machine being just controlled by a program. You know, a, you, you write a program for a machine, you fire it off and it moves it. And they said, they basically say that this is how we are and Al-Qadr just moves us around. So our prayers and our fasting and our actions, all of them are compelled and are uh, controlled by the Qadr of Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, like a machine, like you control a machine with a program. And like literally like a robot. And I think it is obvious how deviant that ideology is. Yani, SubhanAllah, imagine that this is how it is. Then why we were created in the first place then? Right? What's the point? What's the whole point in creating us? If, this is a, if, the, if the obedient is compelled into obedience and the disobedient is compelled into disobedience, then what's the point? Right? There's no point in all this creation. Al-Qadariya, on the other hand, are those the deniers of Al-Qadar. Those who deny Al-Qadar. Again, they, they committed extremism. How? They, ex they went to extreme and exaggerated in affirming the will of the creation now. So they took it out of the will of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So they made Allah azza wa jal, they denied al-qadr and they denied the knowledge of Allah azza wa jal of what we're going to do. And they made the servant, the creation, completely independent of the will of Allah azza wa jal. And we have an absolute will into doing what we do that is independent of the will of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And obviously, they, they say that we actually choose what we want and we create what we do. That our actions, and if you remember, we said that the truth is that our creation, our actions are created by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. He is the one when he, when he allows us to do something, then he brings it into existence. So these are uh, the two opposite things that are deviant. And we said that Al-Jabriya are actually of two types. There are the extreme Jabriya that believe that we are compelled outwardly and inwardly. We're just like a feather in the in the stream of the wind. That's how they describe it. And there is the moderate, if you wish, or the, you know, the wasat jabriya. And, but nonetheless, both of them are deviant. Those who believe that we are outwardly have a choice, but inwardly and in reality, we don't have a choice and that we are only compelled. The al-qadariya, likewise, there is also two types. There is the ghulat al-qadariya. These are the extreme qadariya who actually deny that Allah Azza wa Jal knows what the creation will do. And there's the moderate Qadariya, still deniers of Al-Qadar, but they are like Al-Mu'tazila, who actually denied some of the, uh, 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 some of the levels of Al-Qadar, of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So they denied that Allah Azza wa Jal has a will over us, that His will is the supreme will over our will, or that we create, that they said that we create our actions, and that they are not from the creation of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Uh, like I said, both of them are deviant and both of them are not from the Islam in anything. And the Islam is bain, is in between. We don't go to this extreme, nor do we go to that extreme. Al-Qadariya, by the way, those deniers of Al-Qadar, or Al-Jabriya for that matter, both of them, you know, some people, when we mention them, we say, why are we mentioning them? These are from history, right? These are groups that existed in the history. Do they even exist today? We say, absolutely, they do exist. And that is why we have to talk about this, about this and understand what it is and spot those people when they actually talk about that. There are people around us, even in this world, even in our, um, in our societies, who actually preach these ideologies. Al-Jabriya, for example, those who, de who deny al-Qadr of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, who deny the knowledge of Allah, azza wa jal. There are people, some prominent people, by the way, around who actually believe in this. There is a very famous person, by the way, who claim he is a scholar, self-acclaimed scholar. And he actually present himself as an interfaith professional in North America. In one of his speeches, he said, I don't believe that Allah Azza wa knows what the creation will do. 
He doesn't know. He only learns as, we, as the creation does the actions. He doesn't know from before. He didn't know from ever, right? He didn't have this knowledge from ever of what the creation will do. He only learns when we make our choices. This is a person who claims to be a scholar of Islam. So this is not a historical you know, a book of history in here. These are real people today that preach those ideologies. Likewise, al Jabriya, those who believe that we are compelled. There are, uh, you know, madaris around Chicago land area and everywhere else who preach this ideology that we are compelled into doing what we're doing. We don't have a free will in reality. So that's why we have to be very careful about that. The last statement, and I guess we're running out of time. Let me open the door for questions in those few statements, in those few minutes, inshallah. We'll delay the last one. So remind me, inshallah, we'll start in here next time. The statement 218. Any questions? Tadam. Here is a question from the chat. Uh, what is the name of someone who goes into extremism? The one who goes into extremism, we call it ghalin. Yani because he committed al ghulu. Extremism is al ghulu. Somebody who commits al ghulu, somebody who is ghalin. This person is a ghali. From al-ghulu. So that's why we said al-Muslim. You may want, you may want to memorize this, brothers and sisters. Al-Muslim laysa bil-ghali wala bil-jafi. Remember al-jafa? What is al-jafa? Falling short. Falling short of what is required. Extremism is going beyond what is required. See, it is extreme, extreme on both sides. Falling short is wrong and deviant. And going beyond and adding and being stricter is extremism. So the one who is extreme in their ideologies or in their suluk, in their attitude or in their ibadah, we call that person ghalin. Yani he is committing al ghulu. Now, good question, mashallah. Tadal. Bismillah rahman rahim you're fine, this is only for the, uh, for the stream. But you have to raise your voice, Barakallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, salatu salam ala maulayna rasulillah, jazakallah khair. But yeah. I think there are a lot of generic um, terms in here, like between al-Jabr and al-Qadr, between al-Amni and al-Yas. If we go back to al-Jabr and al-Qadr, these are very uh, loaded terms. And if we go, we don't go to Al Jabriya all the way. It is, you know, the extreme side of Al Jabriya. We're compulsed to do things. No. But there are actually, there are, if we go into details, there's a lot of things to be said for Al Jabriya yes. and Al Qadri. The Muslim, yes, he's from the, in the Bayinia, Al Bayinia, um, Al Wasatiya. From the between this side, the far left and far right. But there are things that you have to be, there are things that have to be from the uh, uh, far right, like al-aqidah. There is no, there is no uh, uh, room for negotiation, so to speak. But that's not extremism, though. This is what we're saying, by the way. Al-aqidah, absolutely, you're right. We are crystal clear upon our aqidah. But this understanding that we've been explaining all along, this is the very wasatiyah, which is in between extremism and falling short. Yani everything that we explained, whether with respect to the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, mm -hmm. whether with respect to the matters of Al-Iman, Masail Al-Iman, whether with respect to the affirmation of the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, whether with respect to who is the disbeliever and who is the Muslim, and when does the Muslim leaves the fold of Islam, what is considered an act of disbelief, right? All of this is a person who is sinning becomes a disbeliever, even if they die on that state without repenting to Allah Azza wa Jal. All of those matters, right? All of this to feel fully secure or to actually despair from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. We said we actually are hopeful for the good doers, but we don't feel fully secure. Likewise, we are scared or, and we fear for the evil doers, but we don't feel that, we don't think that they are doomed. They are under the Mashiach of Allah Azza wa Jal. There are groups who went to extreme in that. They labeled any person who is a major sinner, 
then they took them outside of the fold of Islam. We say this is extremism, and this is not the understanding of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So what we're saying is this understanding is not far left or far, far, far right like, mm. you, like you refer to it. This is al wasatiyah This is the understanding of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, which is al wasat which is in between the two. Jazakallah right. I, 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 I totally Wait. agree. I just want to yeah. get to some, some understanding that, that's in my mind. I could yeah. be wrong. That al wasatiya doesn't mean to have, that you have to stick to a certain way of doing things. I'm going to give a, a very layman uh, example. Coming to the masjid, the very first thing of a Muslim, I mean, al iman, as we know, the second level after Islam, and then the third level is ihsan. No. So to be among the Muslims, I mean, the mu'min, la ilaha illallah, and the very basic imatatul ada. No. I mean, if you belong to, uh, to the ummah of al wasatiya, then the very first thing you want to do to come into a masjid is to put your shoes on the rack, is to keep your washroom clean. No. There is an epidemic which is impacting how we no. are portrayed to others, no. how we can make da'wah and our, uh, our bathrooms are filthy. No. And this is not, I'm not picking on certain masjid. No. You go across masjid. So what is the wasatiyah here? Sure. No, the you have to be extreme here question. to be clean. And let me just answer this very quickly, inshallah, in a concise way because we're running out of time. The wasatiyah with respect, this is a very good question. So the brother is asking about al-iman. What is al-wasatiyah in al-iman? Al-wasatiyah in al-iman is when you have the understanding that al-iman is the conviction of the heart and the speech of the tongue and the actions of the limbs, and this is part of al-iman. And the most important of the actions is a salah because it is, the, it is a mandatory action upon the believers. So somebody who is praying then, and they believe that the actions are part of al-iman, this is the wasat understanding of the masail al-iman, right? And when you try to do, the more you do, then the higher the level of al-iman is. Obviously, the people aren't at the same level of al-iman. But this is al-wasatiyah in understanding what al-iman is. Some people take the actions outside of the understanding of al-Iman. This is extremism, this is, un this is falling short, right? So this is deviant. But rather the actions are part of al-Iman. And from al-Iman, like you said, there is a highest level, perfect level of al-Iman, and there is the lowest level, which is al-Mujzi, which is the barely sufficient, and people vary greatly in between them. And the more that you do, the more you draw closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, then the higher you are going up in the ladder of al-Iman. But this is al-wasatiyah, this is the understanding of what al-iman is. And this is what we're talking about. And obviously, tahur is also from al-iman. As Rasulullah Sallallahu said, what tahuru shatru al-iman, yani is half of al-iman, is part of al-iman. Because it is the key to the prayer. I hope that I answered your question. Barakallahu feekum. Hadha wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan.